From the earliest known depictions of the Earth, it's always been flat and enclosed by a dome. The Egyptians, Norse, Hindus, Mayans, Incas, Navajos, Hebrews, etc. all knew that the Earth is flat and covered by the firmament, which is basically an impenetrable barrier encapsulating the flat plain. The flat Earth model dominated for thousands of years. It wasn't until 1543 that Nicholas Copernicus proposed the heliocentric model of the universe. But even with that, flat earthers and the flat earth model still went strong all the way up into the 1900s. We see proof of that with books like Zetetic Cosmogony by Thomas Winship, published in 1899. Terra Firma, The Earth Not a Planet, Proved from Scripture, Reason, and Fact by David Wardlaw Scott, published in 1901. So we see from the beginning of time all the way until the 1900s, the flat and stationary Earth was going strong. In all honesty, flat Earth has never died. In a magazine from August 1931 called Popular Science, explorer August Picard went on record stating, it seemed a flat disk with an upturned edge after ascending 10 miles high on a balloon. 10 miles is only a little over 50,000 feet. Today we have balloons going up to 121,000 plus feet, which is almost 23 miles, and the Earth still shows nothing but flatness. Not to mention the horizon remains at eye level at that height, something that would not be possible if the Earth was a sphere. Mainstream science says that curvature becomes visible at 35,000 feet. It simply is not so. Now let's run through another timeline, the timeline of trying to hide the flat Earth. Now we're going to exclude Copernicus here. We know that heliocentrism, spinning ball Earth, has been pushed since the 1500s, but it wasn't until the 1900s that moves were made to hide the true shape and nature of the Earth. In fact, they started programming us in 1912, before Earth's shape was even proven, supposedly. With the founding of Universal Pictures, we have been shown a spinning globe before every movie by that company for over a hundred years. But anyway, that started in 1912, and we kept cruising, and kept cruising, and in 1946, we have Operation High Jump where an expedition to Antarctica was led by Admiral Richard E. Byrd. They say they went to Antarctica to train, test equipment, and test the possibilities of establishing and maintaining military research bases. They claim to have charted the Antarctic coastline during this time. Who knows what else they found? Fast forward a little bit. 1955, Operation Deep Freeze. This is just an expansion of high jump, where more research bases are added to Antarctica. Fast forward a little more, 1958. NASA is established, followed by the proposal of the Antarctic Treaty in 1959, and the implementation of it in 1961. The treaty basically puts Antarctica off limits to civilians, with the exception of guided tours that are carefully supervised. In 1962, Operation Fishbowl takes place. Now this is where people start thinking that they found the firmament or dome during Operation High Jump or Operation Deep Freeze, because for some reason, they started firing nuclear missiles straight up as if trying to mess with the firmament somehow. And not to mention the name of the project, Fishbowl, easily symbolic for the enclosed nature of our world. Okay, so the same year, 1962, JFK gives his famous We choose to go to the moon speech. Now I think all of these events tie into these guys finding out about the true disposition of Earth, including the crystalline canopy that we can't get past. Keep that in mind. They know we are trapped in and we can't leave. And they choose to pretend like we can leave, which comes back and bites them in the ass later. We'll get there, but let's continue. Four years later, 1966, Lunar Orbiter 1 captures the supposed first ever picture of Earth from deep space. Two years after that, in 1968, Apollo 8 captures this. 
In 1969, they capture this after Apollo 11 lands man on the moon for the very first time. And in 1972, on their sixth and final trip to the moon, we get one of the most famous pictures of all time, the blue marble. These alleged pictures of Earth, especially 1972's blue marble, are the entire reason behind pretending to go to the moon in the first place. The spherical Earth, flat Earth debate is over. All the ancient cultures of the world and all of the authors writing flat Earth books well into the 1900s are incorrect. The Earth is not flat. NASA has proved it. It's over. You live on a spinning ball, just like Universal Pictures predicted. Only one problem with that. It's now 2017. Curvature cannot be detected by anyone on Earth. Motion can't be detected, nor has it ever been proven, and now all of the sudden we can't figure out how to get past low Earth orbit. Early in the next decade, a set of crewed flights will test and prove the systems required for exploration beyond low Earth orbit. NASA's next spacecraft, already being built and tested across America, will do those things and more. This is the spacecraft that's going to take humans to explore uh, the solar system. It's the next big step for NASA in exploration. Called the Orion Multipurpose Crew Vehicle, or MPCV, this next generation spacecraft will enable America to explore beyond low Earth orbit. As we get further away from Earth, we'll pass through the Van Allen belts, an area of dangerous radiation. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. The kinds of technologies that we're testing out on Space Station are definitely helping us with our goals of going beyond low Earth orbit. I think in, in many would consider it maybe even science fiction. The plan that NASA has is to build a rocket called SLS, which is a heavy lift rocket. It's something that is, that is much bigger than what we have today, and it will be able to launch the Orion capsule with humans on board, as well as uh, landers or other uh, components to, via, to destinations beyond Earth orbit. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go. And this new system that we're building is gonna allow us to go beyond and hopefully take humans into the solar system to explore. So the moon, Mars, asteroids, there's a lot of destinations that we could go to and we're building these building block components in order to allow us to do that eventually. Low Earth orbit is between 99 miles and 1200 miles away. So we'll say that we can't get past 1,200 miles, and that's a big problem because the moon, according to the heliocentric model, is about 237,000 miles away. Now that's a big difference. Why was it so easy to go to the moon six times between 1969 and 1972, but we can't go even 1% of that distance now? Yeah, 1%. We can't even go 1% of that distance. Of course, they blame it on the idea of a radiation belt. But the truth is that the Van Allen belt is a cover story for the firmament. We live on a flat plane inside of an enclosed structure. It has always been this way, and it will always be this way. The ridiculous notion of us living on a spinning ball darting through infinite space is very new on the complete timeline of mankind. And at the rate things are going, it won't be around much longer. The deception of heliocentrism will have been a very short-lived attempt at removing man from his and her divine nature. This is ODD TV. Thanks for watching.